What's going on everybody? Spaceballs here. Welcome back to another Skylanders video. All right, everyone. Today we're doing the Grind is Real Part 2. And I really like this series because I feel like it's going to help you guys in progressing your account in the best way. And what we do in the series is I go over my account progression for the month. I show you guys what I'm farming, why I'm farming it, the progression that I made in this month in hopes that it will help you guys progress your accounts in the same way, if not faster. If you're spending money, obviously you're going to progress faster than me because I am 100% free to play. And I know this series is already helping a lot of people. Because a lot of people sometimes aren't doing the right thing or aren't progressing their accounts in the right way and they're kind of just building all over the place. So after they watched the first grind is real, they said, hey, thanks a lot because, you know, this really showed me that I was doing the wrong thing. And now thanks to your video, I'm doing the right thing. So this series makes me really happy and I really enjoy doing it. So in this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to go over all my progression, all the upgrades that we made in this last month. I'm going to show you guys some runs in the gold dungeon, what stage I'm farming and why, the gear that I'm upgrading. Basically, a full account review in hopes that this will really help you guys progress your accounts in the right way. So first Skylander here is my Pit Boss. Now you guys know that I absolutely love Pit Boss. If you guys are free-to-play players, Pit Boss is probably one of the best legendaries that you can build first. Now I know Amber is considered the best Skylander in the game at the moment. And I do agree with that to an extent. But when you're free-to-play and you're early on and you don't have a lot of keys, and I can promise you within your first month or two months of playing, you're only going to have enough keys to build one legendary. Now, if you're lucky and you pull multiple copies of that legendary, then it's different because you won't have to use keys to super boost it. But if you're a free-to-play player and you're not spending money and you're not really doing a lot of summons and you only have one copy of the legendary, you are only going to be able to super boost that one legendary. Do your due diligence. Look over the Skylanders. Look at the team you have currently and make sure you're building the best legendary for your current situation. I cannot stress that enough. So if you go into your box and you have a full DPS team and then you decide to build Amber on top of that, it's probably not the best decision because you already have enough DPS. You need something to support that DPS, something like a pit boss, something that will strip the enemy, something that will heal you, basically a support to your current DPS team. Now I'm not saying building another DPS would be a bad thing, but you want to build a Skylander that is going to complement you the most and basically carry you through all of the content. Because that is going to be your one and only legendary for a very long time, let me tell you. Because as a free-to-play player, I have not been lucky and I really don't pull super boosts on my legendary. Sometimes I'll pull one like Tide Pool and Wildstorm. But even one, you still need 40 keys at that point. So it's really not going to help you that much. So I went with Pit Boss and I am so happy that I did because this man carries me through all of the content. I use him in PvE, PvP. He is just an absolute destroyer. His strip is so strong on his A1 and A2, and he strips every single time because of his passive, and also paired with his passive, he's able to heal your team as well. So if he lands the strip, he will actually heal all allies by 20% of their own maxed HP. This is a really awesome skill. And the main reason Pit Boss shines so much in PvP and PvE content, because he is just generally all around good, and he actually does pretty good damage, let me tell you. Now all the runes on him are 5 star legendary as you see. I want to switch these to 6-star legendaries eventually, but you guys know 6-star gear in this game is an absolute nightmare. On my Tide Pool here, I'm trying to put 6-star legendary gear on her, and I'm literally draining all my gold, all my ether, just doing like one of these to plus 6, plus 9. So it has been an absolute nightmare trying to upgrade 6-star gear. So I do recommend if you are 100% free to play, it is better to stick to 5-star gear until your whole team is maxed out 5-star gear, and then you could switch over to the 6-star gear after your main team is already built and you're clearing all the content in the game, then you can kind of come back and work on 6-star gear because it is an absolute nightmare when it comes to gold and ether. I learned that from building my girl Tide Pool. So back to Pit Boss. I wanted to have a little bit of attack on him, but I didn't really care about that too much. I care more about the defense, the HP, and the accuracy. I do not have enough accuracy on my Pit Boss. I'm going to fix this when I switch his runes to 6-stars. And my goal is going to be to get 200% accuracy on him because in PvP, you guys know everybody's running with like 200% resistance. So you need at least 200% accuracy, effect accuracy, to counter that resistance so you can actually land your strips. Otherwise, Pit Boss will not land his strip and then you won't get the heal, which can be a big problem in late game PvP content. Now, Pit Boss has a very high endurance of 15, which also makes him really good. So it is really hard to knock him down early on. And then basically after that, I just tried to get a little bit of crit rate, a little bit of crit damage, just to give him a little bit of damage. And he actually does really good damage on this build. So I will click the slots here on his rune so you guys can just see how I went about runing him up. I'm not going to go over runes too much here. I just want you guys to see how I'm progressing my Skylanders. So that's Pit Boss. Next up is Flare Wolf. 
Flare Wolf is probably my favorite Skylander at the moment. This man is a one-shot king. He one-shots everything in PvP. I absolutely love him. I want to build my super shot stealth elf because I feel like she's going to do the same thing. I recently just changed his gear as well. And again, it's five-star legendary gear. I went from four-star to five-star. And now I'm trying to go five-star to six-star, but that change is much harder than going from four-star to five-star, let me tell you. So here's his overall stats. He does damage to himself based on his own max HP. So I did want to have some HP on him. And that is the reason for the life set, because usually with the damage he does to himself, the life steal set will actually give him that health back. So it's like he's taking no damage. So life steal set is really good on your flare wolf. It'll stop him from doing a ton of damage to himself. I find it works really good. I just wanted as much attack, crit rate, crit damage as possible, followed up by HP. This man just wrecks everything. So let me click on his runes for you here. With a flare wolf, I did want a little bit of resistance, but it was hard to get the resistance. You know, crit rate, crit damage, HP, and attack all in one. But being I use him on defense sometimes, I did want a little bit of resistance. So you will see some resistance on these runes. But it was really hard for me to get the resistance I wanted on him without using a resistance main stat, which I did not want to do. So you'll see all these substats on these runes will be like crit rate, resistance, accuracy, defense, HP. Because that is the theme we're going with on our Flare Wolf. Let me just sell all these green runes here. I don't know why they're here. I think I was farming before this video. I'm always farming, let me tell you. So that's Flare Wolf. He is an absolute beast. I love him so much. I smile whenever I look at him because he's so strong. You guys know I use Roll Brawler. I love her. She's good in all content. She is still a strong, strong Skylander for me. I haven't quite found a replacement for her yet. Maybe when Tidepool is ready, she can potentially replace Stink Bomb or Roll Brawler. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see what happens. But I've showed my Roll Brawler a million times. I will show her again here. Again with her. We're going for straight DPS and some HP and defense to back it up. Because again, like if you build a Skylander straight glass cannon, what's going to happen, especially in PvP, she's just going to get one shot and then she's not going to be able to dish the damage out because she won't be able to because she's not going to be there because the enemy's going to take her out one, two, three. So I do think it's important, even when you're building a damage dealer, to have at least like 15k HP and around that 1500 defense mark. I do truly think that's important and it has helped me a lot. And the way to do that is by using main stats of HP and defense and then going for the DPS substats. That's what works for me. I'm sure it'll work for you guys too. Try it out, let me know how it goes. So again, crit rate, crit damage, attack, HP, defense. And then we want to try to get as much effect accuracy as possible. Now effect accuracy is important because she has a poison, a knockdown and a diminish. But her overall damage is important to me as well. So I kind of split the pot on that one. And she seems to work great. And normally she lands all of her debuffs. So here we got the slot one. And again, she's going to be ruined just like all my other DPSs. Crit rate, crit damage, accuracy, attack. The motto of a DPS unit. So that's my Rogue Brawler. Stink Bomb, again, you guys know I've been using him since the beginning. I love him. Basically the same stats as my Rogue Brawler. We were able to get higher attack, but less crit rates, crit damage, a little bit more effect accuracy because he does have a diminution of poison, and I was able to get it, so I went with it. I think it's important for you guys to take notice that I don't use main stats of accuracy and resistance. That is really important when you're going into late game content, so just make sure you bury that in your mind when you're ruining up your Skylanders. You never want to go with resistance or accuracy. Maybe in some situations, like Pit Boss, for example, Getting up to 200 accuracy, you might have to go with one main stat of accuracy. And then again, if you're trying to get like 200% resistance, it's okay to put like a main stat on your boots of resistance just to achieve that 200% resistance. Because I don't think it will be really possible for you to get all the stats you want and 200% resistance and all that tankiness without using at least one main stat of, you know, either effect, accuracy, or resistance. So just keep that in mind once again. Love this man. Same with Roll Brawler, same with Flare Wolf. I'm really happy with my team currently, but I am working on my Tide Pool. I feel like she is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I've seen her one shot Barbellas, Gear Shifts. She has the highest DPS in the game. She's super underrated. What happened was early on, somebody made a tier list, or a couple people made a tier list, and they rated Tide Pool really bad and said that she was the worst legendary in the game. So a lot of people just ran with that and just assumed that she was, but let me tell you, she's not. She's probably one of the best Skylanders in the game. I'm not saying she's top three, but she's definitely up there for late game PvP content. And she's really good in the gold dungeon. And she's really good in farming. In my eyes, she's all around good. I actually love Tidepool. And I'm happy to build her. So I'm going to kind of speed things up here. I'm working on Zulu. 
Super boosts are going to hold me back. And until I get him super boost, I'm not going to fully invest in him. But I am going to slowly build him on the side. So when I'm ready, I could just upgrade the runes and throw him into the content I want to use him in, which is PvP defense. I'm working on smaller dash, slow and steady. Again, the super boosts are holding me back, so I'm not rushing into it. And that's the same for a lot of these Skylanders that I'm building right now, like Pop Fizz, Airstrike, Amber. Like, again, I want to build them, but I don't have the super boost. And being a free-to-play player, it's close to impossible to get these super boosts. Unless you're pulling dupes, and I am not. The RNG has not been good to me. So let's hope tonight I can get some super boost on these legendary Skylanders. Or even some heroics, for that matter, because I really do want to build, like, Slam Bam, Trigger Happy even dive clops but the problem is i have zero super boost on them and i just don't have the keys to build them up but the super boosts are just holding me back and that's one of the things you guys are going to notice as a free-to-play player you're kind of going to have to go with what you have sometimes or make best of what you have because super boosts are really going to hold you back now i clear all content in the game and that was just by looking through what i had building what i had and just running with it 100 percent same thing with pit boss using all the keys I got and just investing in him 100% because I knew that Pit Boss would carry me through all the content. And that's basically what you guys are trying to do is pick those specific Skylanders that are really going to help you out in the game. You don't need every Skylander built. Trust me on that. You could pick a handful of Skylanders and you will do just fine. So that's what I've been working on as far as my Skylanders go. Now, like you guys see here, I was sitting on 14 million gold. The second I started upgrading six star runes, that 14 million gold went to zero real, real fast. So don't rush to 6-star runes, guys, let me tell you. It is not worth it. As far as the challenges go, you know I'm clearing all content here. C6, we have a C6 video. I'll link that down below. Merge Tower, I'm clearing no problem. This is 100% auto. Now, I could go back through this and get all of the stars. It's just not important to me right now. Once they beef Merge Tower up and add more, I'll probably make it a point to go back and actually get all the stars. But for 250 gems, it's just not worth it for me right now. Now, if you have the time... I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. You absolutely should. So if you have the Skylanders built and you want to get all the stars, go for it. It is definitely worth it. For me right now, I just have so much on my plate. I'm just not worried about 250 gems. You see how many gems I'm sitting on as a free-to-play player. Now, Dark Substigation. We are getting about 500,000 to 650,000 on auto, which I am completely happy with. So I'm going to run a battle here. And then towards the end, I'm going to come back. And then we'll talk about where our score is. So I'll be back in just one second. And poof, we're back. Okay, so it's towards the end of the fight here. Now, this is one of my better runs. If you guys follow me on Discord, which is linked down below, you guys will know that yesterday, I believe I hit almost 700,000 on auto. But you guys also know when it comes to auto, things can really range all over the place because auto is not consistent. If I sat here and manual this, I could probably consistently get the same score. But to me, it is not important. But the one thing I do want to say about substigation is that this is one of the only places right now to get keys as a free-to-play player. So you should definitely take Substigation seriously. This will be the only way you're going to bring in keys throughout the week. So it is important that you get a decent score on this. I'm not saying you have to go, you know, crazy. But averaging like 450 plus should be your goal as a free-to-play player. Because like you see here, we got 10 green keys. So you do want to maximize the amount of keys you're bringing in in your Dark Substigation. So it is important content. So you definitely want to take this seriously and you definitely want to build a team that is going to get you at least 400 plus thousand on auto. I do think that's important. And Pit Boss is actually really good for this. He does strip the boss of the attack buff and all that stuff and then heals your team as well. And the second I added Pit Boss to my team, I went from about 350,000 to about 500 plus thousand. So just keep that in mind. It goes back to what I was saying about picking the right legendary as your first legendary build. I am not pushing Substigation yet. Eventually in the future, when I have a bunch of Super Boosts and all my Skylanders built, I'll come back and I'll really push Dark Substigation and all of the content for that matter. For right now, I'm just basically farming the game, trying to get my account stronger, which is what you guys should be doing too. Because if you guys have been playing since the beginning like me, it's been about two plus months since the game has been out. So we can't like be crushing everything as a free-to-play player, but we can be doing good at it and getting decent scores, which will progress our accounts faster. Awakening, I've been clearing this since the second week of playing. Most of you guys, I'm sure, are clearing it. This is the team that I'm using here. Now, I could switch Pit Boss into here, but I don't need him for the Awakening Dungeon. I really don't need a healer for this, and this team seems to work just fine. But just keep in mind, I do have Lifesteal sets on basically all of my Skylanders, so that does help in not needing a healer for a lot of this content. Episode, 
I'm kind of stuck here right now because I don't have premium units built. Now I could beat it to the end technically, but I'm going to start working on premium units this week so I can actually finish this whole thing the right way and make a guide video on it. So more of this coming soon. As a early game free to play player, I don't think this should be your main focus. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's going to expire or anything like that. So I don't think you need to rush into this head over heels. Clear as much as you can, but don't drive yourself crazy right away because you are going to need premiums, rares, and heroics to clear the actual missions as you go. Because once you finish with premiums, next is rares, and then after that's heroics. And then I believe after that is legendaries. So don't go too crazy with this. Try to clear as much as you can. Work on the units you need and then come back to it and clear it at your leisure. So that's basically it for all the content that we're clearing. Clearing everything here. You guys know this from the last video, but we have made huge upgrades since the last video. I mean, we're clearing Dark Subsegation almost 200,000 more than we were last month. Merge Tower, we're autoing the whole thing. I don't think last month we were autoing it as easy. It was a little bit tougher. We were not clearing C6, which we are clearing now, and we're doing this in about 13 turns, 13 to 16 turns, which is amazing. The Feather Dungeon, I don't really mess with this too much. I'm going to start going into it now that I have 140 Feathers saved. So I'm actually going to make a separate video on this. I'm going to make a team for this, and then I will make a video, so stay tuned for that. I basically only do one run a day, and that's to get the energy from the event. Other than that, I don't really touch it right now, but I will start focusing on that soon. As far as PvP goes, Sky Tower just came out. Now, for me, I feel like this is super late game content, and this was released way too early. That's just my opinion, because a lot of people are just not going to have these Skylanders built. Most players will be lucky to have like one team of four or one team of six built. So you should do this as much as you can, but don't go crazy. Don't refresh it. I don't think they added rewards again. Let me see here just to make sure. Yeah, I don't see any rewards for it. Because the first time they released Sky Tower, there was really good rewards. So it was definitely worth it. But they're not here anymore. So it doesn't make it worth it to refresh. So basically do your five attacks along hand with your regular arena. And don't drive yourself crazy. Don't build a bunch of Skylanders outside of your means until you're ready. Just go as high as you can. Do your five attacks and walk away from it. There's really not big benefits from Sky Tower. This is more for late game players that are like maxed out, you know, that had big compensation, spent a lot of money. This is more content for them. And when you look at the rewards here, I mean, 200 gems and one gold transcendent, you know, 180 gems, eight purples. It's not really worth it as a free to play player or a new player. It's just not worth driving yourself nuts trying to build all of these Skylanders. But now with the new episode, it kind of goes hand in hand because once you build those, you can use them here. So just take this at your own speed. For me, I don't go crazy with it. I basically do my fire attacks and I walk away from it. Sky Tower to me shouldn't have been added yet. This should have been something they added way later on. That's just my opinion. We definitely need guild content in this game. So hopefully they're going to add guild content next because that's what this game really needs. Not Sky Tower. We needed guild wars. But for me, Sky Tower content is just not the content I'm into right now. If my account was max and I had a bunch of max legendaries, it might be different. But for me, it's just not something I'm really into at the moment. Now, as far as arena goes, you guys know in the last update, they added medals. So I do recommend pushing as high as you can in arena. It will definitely benefit you because you're going to get these extra medals. Before, they only gave you medals based on the attacks that you did. Now you get medals based on where you finish. So definitely towards the end of the week, you should try to get as high as you can. The higher you get, the more medals you would get, and then you can use them in the shop. And eventually you could buy blackouts, you know, all the other stuff that's in the shop. I think there's keys now, skill up stones. So there's a lot of beneficial stuff from the shop here. Yeah, we have awakening stones, splendors. Yeah, there's no keys. X that from the list. But basically all the skill ups you need are here. Proto Masters, Skylanders, and then your Splendors, and then your Blackout. So it is good to be collecting as many medals as you can, especially for skill ups, because we all know that skill ups are so hard to get in this game. So if you're getting a lot of medals, you can use them on legendary skill ups and then you can max out your legendaries, which is something you're going to have to do as you play the game. And other than that, I'm just doing all my events. I make sure I clear every single event. I'm doing every single mission in the game. I do all my dailies every single day. I do all my guild stamps because again, guys, as a free to play player, this is free stuff like here, 50 gems. I'm not saying this is game changing, but it definitely helps you as a free to play player. And if you do like me and you save everything up and you're kind of stingy with your resources, you will sit on the amount of gems that I do. And that is just by me being really smart and not just wasting my gems on random summons and stuff like that. I literally don't touch my gems unless it's for energy. That is the only time I actually use these gems. 
is when I need to refill my energy. Now, the gold dungeon, I'm going to do a full guide on this. I know we kind of did a guide, but I want to do a more in-depth guide of me actually manualing one of these and showing you guys exactly how this works. Right now, I'm averaging about 170 to 190 on auto, sometimes lower, like you guys saw in the video. Again, auto is just such a crazy back and forth thing. You never know what you're going to get when you're autoing these things. So I am going to do an in-depth guide on this and episode in the future because the gold dungeon can be really beneficial to you. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here and what I've really been farming for the past month. So basically, every single day since the last episode, I'm farming C6 and I'm farming Adventures 8-7. That is where I am every single day, 15 plus hours a day. And the reason I switched from 4-7 to 8-7 is because 8-7 is actually giving me more resources as a payout, more gold. If you're trying to level up a whole team, it's really your choice at the end of the day. For me, I don't mind leveling up one Skylander at a time and then collecting the extra gold you know, and the extra resources on top of it. It's really your choice on what you want to farm. But 8-7 has been actually really great for me, and it's a lot easier for me to stack up gold. So basically what I do is I spend half the day here, and then I spend the other half the day in C6. After that, I go, I do my PvP, I clear all my events, I do my dungeons, whatever I need to do for the day. And I switch back and forth with this now with the gold dungeon, because the more you farm here, the more gold dungeon tickets you get, and then the more gold you get overall. So that is why I'm liking 8-7 now that the gold nudge is in the game because I'm able to farm gold faster. So I will show you a run here and we will wrap this one up. So what I'm trying to do here now, like running 8-7, is I bring one of my six-star Skylanders in here that I'm currently building, which is Tidepool. And then I bring an heroic or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be heroic or legendary. But basically two Skylanders that I'm building. I put runes on one of them, sometimes two of them. It depends how far along I am with the build. So, for example, we're building Tide Pool. I throw her in there. Now, after she's maxed out, I'll switch her with Amber because I plan on building Amber next. And same thing with Airstrike. Once he's maxed out, I'll switch him with, like, Shark Shooter, Trigger Happy, and then I just rinse and repeat. And then just to show you guys an example, like, what I'm talking about with switching stuff out. Now, let's say I was leveling up Zulu. I would take out Airstrike. I'd put in Zulu. If I wanted to level up my Spitfire, I'd put him in here. And again... Because they're built up a little bit, it allows me to be able to clear this content without having like super good runes or having them super boosted. And it gets me the maximum resources that I'm looking for. So I'm building up Airstrike at the moment. So let's just leave him in there for now. Let's go back and let's do a run and then we'll wrap this one up. So now just to touch on Skylanders in general, I love the grind of Skylanders. The main reason I play this game is because of how grindy it is. Now I know a lot of you guys don't like the grind. I know most of you do, but some of you don't. I love the old school gotcha where you have to grind, grind, grind. Especially in a game like Skylanders where we know there's going to be a lot of content in the future. We're still missing so much content. We still don't have guild content. We still have the content coming on the dual screen. We just got the episode content. We still don't have friendly battles. We don't have RTA. Hopefully they're going to add that eventually. We don't know for sure, but I'm hoping that they're going to. And being that it's coming to us, I'm sure eventually we will get RTA. So for me, I really do enjoy the slow grind, building my Skylanders slowly, getting them maxed up. You feel like you actually achieve something and it feels rewarding to an extent. So for me, I do love the slow grind in this game. I know not everybody's the same. Once you get your main team built, there's really no reason for you to like have to like go crazy and build a bunch of Skylanders. It's more about farming resources anyways. And to be honest with you, you're gonna be farming adventures 90% of your time playing this game regardless same thing with c6 so it basically goes hand in hand because you're gonna have to farm up your skylanders anyways and you're gonna have to farm gold so you put them together and you're gonna farm skylanders and gold so if you had no skylanders to grind potentially it would be boring because you would just be farming gold or ether or one and the other now this run looks the exact same every single time it never fails basically my row brawler and stink bomb are soloing this for the most part now, Tide Pool's runes have gotten better, but I was doing this with a level 50 Tide Pool with no runes on her, and it still worked just as good. And this is why I'm now farming 8-7 instead of 4-7. And again, we're getting almost 9,000 gold. You know, we're getting blue potions. We're getting blue splendors. The resource income is just so much better than it was on 4-7. So this is where I'm going to stay. Shout out to the person on Twitch that got me into 8-7, because honestly, at first, I didn't want to do it. And I was like, ah, I don't think it's going to be beneficial. 
but it's definitely beneficial and I'm very, very glad that I listened to you. So shout out to you. And I'm really happy about Skylanders and where Skylanders is going right now. I think they're doing a great job. I can't wait for the next patch. I can't wait for Flameslinger to come into the game. I'm so excited. So what I'm going to do is just keep grinding the same thing that I've been grinding this whole month, which is Adventures 8, 7, and C6. That is where I am. That's where I've been for the past month, and that's where I'm going to remain. And what I'm going to do is keep making upgrades to my Skylanders, doing all my events, saving all of my gems, and just rinse and repeat till next month. So I hope this puts you guys in the right direction for part two of The Grind is Real. You guys know what Skylanders, the grind is definitely real. That's what makes this game so much fun in my eyes. I think Skylanders has a really bright future. Thank you guys so much for the love and support here on YouTube, Twitch, Discord. You guys have just been amazing. We are still growing so fast. We are so close to 2.5k subs. Once we reach it, we will start another sub celebration giveaway. We also do a random giveaway here on YouTube. If you want to be a part of that, all you have to do is sub the channel, like, and comment on my past 10 videos. If you want to follow me on Twitch and Discord, that is linked down below. We do two monthly giveaways on Discord, and we do random giveaways on Twitch. Thank you guys so much for love and support. I truly do love each and every single one of you. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.